All right, so then you get some practice problems to work through um, to help you. The next section is converting from English to metric units. Uh, so there's a section here on temperature and we give you the equations for uh, doing the conversions from Fahrenheit to Celsius or vice versa. Honestly, I'm not gonna have you guys memorize these conversions, uh, just know how to apply them um, if you need to. I'm more interested in you guys learning and just being aware of the, the maybe the most important measurements you would need to make in uh, degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit and how they relate to each other. So what I'm trying to say is know what is the boiling point of water in both systems of measurement. Know what the freezing point for water is. Have an idea of what normal body, human body temperature is in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then room temperature is also a good idea. You know, it's a good idea to have, you know, a kind of a basis of, of where are we at um, in terms of temperatures for both of the um, measurement scales. So keep that in mind. And I believe that's also in the review topics to help remind you. And here are those various points in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, so you have some practice problems you can work on as well, applying um, the, the formulas there. Where we're gonna spend a little more time is conversions uh, between the two systems, English and metric for length, mass, and volume. Anytime that you wanna convert from one system to another system, you need to have a conversion factor. And there are loads of conversion factors out there. I am not expecting you to memorize any of them. I just need you to know how to apply them. So on a quiz question or a practical question, if I'm asking you to do a conversion, I will give you the actual conversion factor and then you just have to apply it to get the answer. Uh, so here are a couple of conversion factors that we give you just um, as a, you know, sort of example. Um, so inches to centimeters, kilograms to pounds, ounces to milliliters, and gallons to liters. And then there's an example down below on how to do this conversion. I want to take you through one practice problem um, so that you can see kind of how I think through it. Obviously, again, there are multiple ways of doing it. So if you are familiar and comfortable with these conversions, by all means, stick to what you got already. No point in getting confused with something new. So let's go back to the whiteboard. And I'm going to do an example of 130 pounds. And I want to convert this to kilograms. So I'm going from English system to the metric system. And the relationship between pounds and kilograms is for every one kilogram, you have 2.2 pounds. That's my conversion factor. This is something that would be given to you. Now, the nice thing about the conversion factors is that they always equal one. You're saying that one is the same thing as the other. Um, you, no difference between these two, two measurements. And you can write these conversion factors in three different ways. You can write it the way I wrote it here, one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds, or you can write it as a fraction. You can say one kilogram over 2.2 pounds, or just flip it around, it means exactly the same thing, 2.2 pounds is the same thing as one kg. All right, so three options here for my conversion factor. So the whole goal is I want to get rid of the pounds and I want to convert it to my un new unit of measurement, the kilogram. So to do this, I start out with my original measurement and I make it into a fraction, All right? So I just stick it over one. That's the same thing as 130 pounds, simply put. And I'm going to multiply now my measurement by my conversion factor. So one of those guys. I had to figure out which one I want to use though. Um, the way to figure out which one to use is you always want to multiply by a fraction and you want to have the units you are hoping to eliminate in the numerator and the denominator. So upstairs and downstairs. So right now here, I've got 130 pounds on the top. So in the numerator. So I want to multiply by one of my conversion factors that has the pounds in the bottom. So this is gonna be the winner right here. I'm gonna multiply by one kilogram is the same thing as 2.2 pounds. And here you're going to multiply straight across. 
and you're going to cancel out the units that are in the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to have 130 kg over 1 times 2.2 is 2.2. I'll do my math and I've got 59.09 kilograms. So that's the way I would go about doing these conversions from um, English to metric or metric to English for mass, length, and volume. And then section C, the last one, is scientific notation. So there's a lot of information here on um, sort of the purpose behind scientific notation and then also how to do it and how to sort of think about, well, um, you know, what does scientific notation tell you? Um, and then some practice problems. So uh, let's go through a couple of examples. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the standard format for scientific notation. So anytime I ask you to put something into scientific notation, this is the format you always want to use. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your number that is fully written out. And if you want to put in scientific notation, you're going to read the digits from the left to the right until you come to the first non zero digit. And you're going to take that non zero digit and I'm going to call that non zero digit a. That's going to be my abbreviation for a non-zero digit. And you're going to want to move your decimal to after that first non-zero digit. That's the whole point of scientific notation. Take that first non-zero digit, put the decimal behind it, and then you're going to include any other digits that come after that. And so I'm going to use the letter B here to symbolize those other digits because they can be zeros. A cannot be a zero, but Bs can also be zeros. And then you're going to multiply this number by 10 to a certain exponent. The exponent will tell you how many places you actually moved the decimal um, to get it to be after that first non-zero digit. So I'm gonna say this can be a plus or minus depending, that was kind of terrible. Um, can I erase, nope, that's gonna draw. Um, there we go. So it's gonna be plus, or minus an exponent. I'm going to call that exponent y. So that's the format that you're looking for. So let's let's do a couple of practice problems. So let's say I have the number 477903. 477,903. I want to put this number into scientific notation. So the first thing I need to do is I need to read my number from the left to the right and for, find the very first non-zero digit. So that's pretty fast, right? The first non-zero digit here is the number four. So my goal is to take the decimal and put it there after the four so that I can match um, my scientific notation uh, formula. Now, where is currently my decimal? Well, if it's not written, you can always assume it's after the very last digit on the right. So I wanna move my decimal one, two, three, four, five spaces. So I'm going to write out my number now, 4.77903 times 10. I move my decimal point five spaces. That's my exponent. And now I have to figure out, is my exponent positive or negative? So as not to confuse you with how to do the metric conversions, I explain it a little bit differently for scientific notation in terms of whether your exponent should be positive or negative. I ask that you look at your original number. Was your original number greater than one or less than one? If it was greater than one, then your exponent is gonna stay positive. You have a really big number. If your exponent was less, or sorry, if your original number was less than one, it was a decimal, that means that your exponent is going to be negative. So in this case, we had 477,000. That's a really big number, definitely bigger than one. I'm gonna leave my exponent positive. So putting this number into scientific notation, we have 4.77903 times 10 to the fifth. All right, let's do another one. So what if my original number is 0 0.0337? And I wanna stick this guy into scientific notation. So the first thing I need to do is I need to read this number from the left to the right and find the first non-zero digit. So we've got a zero, a zero, and then our first non-zero digit is this three. So we wanna take the decimal, which is there between the two zeros, and we wanna move it after that very first three to fit our format. So in this case, I'm gonna write it out, 3.37 times 10 to the fifth. 
times 10. And now I move my decimal one, two spaces over. So my exponent is going to be a two. Now I have to figure out, is it gonna be positive or is it gonna be negative? Well, in this case, my original number was less than one. And so I have to make my exponent a negative two. You're also gonna to have to know how to go backwards. So let's say I give you a number in scientific notation. 1.559 times 10 to the negative fourth. We need to write this number fully out. So we know where our decimal point is. Right now it's after the one there. And we know that to get it there from the original number, we had to move it four decimal places. So we're gonna move the decimal four decimal places, but we have to figure out which direction. The exponent is negative, which indicates that the original number was less than one, right? It was a decimal. And so you kind of then look at your number and say, okay, if I move my decimal to the right, I'm gonna make my number larger than one. So I've got to move my decimal to the left, if I have a negative exponent in this case, to make my number smaller. So I'm gonna move it four spaces to the left. So that's one, one, two, three, four. So if we write it, write it out, my finger's making lines. Um, that'll be one, two, three zeros. So it'll be one, two, three, one, five, five, nine. And so that'll be taking this number out of scientific notation. We have 0 0.0001559. And I do appreciate having a zero before the decimal. Um, and then if you're handwriting something, make sure that you really make that decimal clearly visible um, so that, you know, I'm not guessing whether you meant to put the decimal there or if it was just an accident that your pencil fell and it made a spot on your paper. Um, so just be very, um, very diligent about, about those decimals.